minutes when you hear this. That means you have a minute left. So uh, don't feel like you have to wrap it up right away because you still you have a whole minute. Uh, remember too when you're giving suggestions and panel help that uh, if you're going to feed someone a shit sandwich at least make the bread taste good. So we're going to be kind to each other uh, even if people suck balls. Here we go with our first comedian funny young man. Put your hands together for Arjun Banjari. Banerjee. I swear I'm going to figure it out one time. <laughs> Turn it on, turn it on, turn it on, turn it on. Yeah! First name was, yeah, I'm fine with the first name, yeah, it's a, that's a accurate. Banerjee. So the, a, the N comes before the E. Anyways, uh, the, the ER comes before the J, that's just the thing to remember. Anyways, I feel like the weirder the... Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, let's watch a full-length movie on YouTube with us. Hello, uh, with Mike Spiegelman and Carl. Hey, Mike, what's up? Well, we we're having, uh, it's a live show right now here on MuniRadio.fm, and we are having some feedback problems uh, that have been going on from the previous show, Carl. So say hi to the good people. And I give them positive feedback. What's that, Carl? I was just noting that I'm giving positive feedback. Yeah, very positive feedback from this show, I would have to say. Uh, oh, boy. Well, good. I'm glad you still have your wits with you or what, what wits you have uh, that you brought to the table. Uh, hi, Carl. One more time. What? Do you hear me well? I, I, I brought my wits with me. No, you know what? Uh, you're coming in faint or you're coming in too strong. So that's how we go. Uh, Carl Halp is here. We're on a conference call with our special guest. Is our special guest with us? Our special guest is with us. Okay, great. Uh, I'm very excited to bring on uh, Marcus Halp, your brother and uh, movie star, uh, best known for his role in uh, Michael Moore's Capitalism, A Love Story. Which, uh, Say hi, Marcus. I want to hear you on, the, on our live show. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's coming in faint. We're going to be tinkering around with this uh, just to while we go. But if you're listening, welcome to our 57th show. Uh, this is Let's Watch a Full-Length Movie with Mike Spiegelman and Carl. Every week we watch a movie on YouTube uh, because there's so many great movies that I, we read about, and now we get to finally watch them on YouTube. Thank you, YouTube. So uh, the idea is you listen to the podcast and watch the movie at the same time with us. And... Uh, you guys, go ahead and just keep talking casually and, and uh, until we're okay. Mike, you have chosen an excellent film. Okay, this film is <laughs> the perfect time, 1957. It was before everything blew up. This, this Carl, all right, hey, Carl, you, uh, hang on a sec. No, I don't know. Uh, Carl... Well, I'm very excited. You were saying that this film is from 1957, and it is uh, before what? Before hippies, right? Yeah, and the thing is, you feel in this movie the taste of hippies to come, you know? It's like setting up the world to be ready for a counterculture. Oh, all right. Well, cool. Well, you know, this movie uh, we're talking about, we're going to watch this on YouTube. It's called Drag Strip Riot. Uh, go ahead and click that in there and then hit pause, and when... Uh, 
when we get this audio snag done, fixed, uh, we'll go ahead and watch this movie. Uh, it looks. Now, is this audio snag because of our conference call? Or no, no, we're we're right? having an issue with the board uh, that's been going on all afternoon here. Well, speaking of which, uh, have you ever listened to Paul Brumba at the Edge of His Sanity? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, okay, that's right. You probably listen to it at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, your time, because you guys are out in uh, New York City, I believe, right? right? Uh, the, near New York well, City. I, I mean, we are totally ahead of you. Uh, we're ahead of San Francisco in many ways, including uh, the what, what time it is. <laughs> you know, man, I think I hear you okay, even though... Uh, it's it's good. We're gonna we're gonna go with this. So we're very excited. So uh, I am typing in drag strip riot, except of course I'm misspelling the word riot. There we go. Can you tell me if this is? Well, the French phone? say it's riot. All right. So uh, this is a uh, I, I see uh, drag strip riot, uh, classic hot rod rockabilly film from Record Pickers. Is that the one we're gonna watch? I think that's what you texted me. I'm having some technical difficulty on booting up. And I'll be with you in one minute. If you get started, I will uh, catch up. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah. The one that you texted me is the one I've been I've been using. Okay. So the issue is that my sound's a little bit bigger than you guys over here. And if I do, if we do increase it, we can, we get feedback. So there's there's something with our board. So okay. We we want some patience from our listeners. Uh, uh, Carl and I have been doing this show for a while, so it's not like. It's our first rodeo, but uh, we'll do the best show we can. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and click this and then immediately hit the pause, and we'll let the buffer circle go round and round. And all right, yeah, well, this is American International Pictures film. That's pretty impressive. Uh, Actually, that is impressive. Those guys were uh, leaders in bad film. Well, it's, so from the 50s and 60s, 70s? Mostly from the 50s. They did bleed into the 60s a little bit, but then culture, counterculture came o- around, and they were considered stodgy. What they did is looked for films that were on the cusp. Okay, my computer came up now. Uh, it, what is it? It is Drag Strip Riot. Drag Strip Riot, that's right. No, okay. Okay, so for instance, yeah, yeah, I'll take those headphones. Without a Cause, and there was, oh gosh, what's that other big one? Um... Yeah, maybe that's what it was. And this film is like um, a B film that was created to suck up all of that energy. Um, okay, I'm with it. A classic hot rod rockabilly film. I have it uh, buffering right now. All right. And I'm putting it on two. Okay, so I'm ready to go when you are ready to go. All right, so uh, Marcus, why don't you go ahead and help us out and do the countdown and just say three, two, one, go. And once you say go, we will go ahead and click play and watch this movie in unison. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. I have a little bit of music playing just so we're all on the same page. Oh, wait a minute. Someone just powered down the computer. What? Oh, hang on a second. Oh, here we go. All right. Uh, I'm on 16 seconds. We're back. Okay. All right. This is some swinging music. Drag Strip Riot in black and white. 1958. Yeah. And now this song... This song is not, uh, it, 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 it's not one of the good songs. There aren't any good songs in this movie, quite frankly. <laughs> uh, there isn't any real good, like, I'm Elvis kind of rock and roll song. Well, we just saw Connie Stevens' name in the credit, and you said she's going to sing a number. Yeah, Faye Ray from uh, King Kong. Yeah, Faye Ray, which is, she's uh, just cashing a check at this point. This is the equivalent of having, like, some 80s star uh, show up in a movie now. You know, like Marissa Tomei in Spider-Man? Yeah, right. She's yeah. just cashing a check. That's yeah. it. Like Bruce Willis. Just walking right through it. Bruce. I used to... I had, I had a pack that I would watch every single Bruce Willis movie ever made. Mm-hmm. And I had to stop that pack. I couldn't do it. Yes. Because did he really make the movie? 
Yeah, sometimes he just sleepwalks to these films, or he's just kind of he talks in the first ten minutes, and then he shows up in the last ten minutes. If you pay close attention, just like sometimes when the boom boom mic is in the shot by mistake, if you watch Bruce Willis's left hand, sometimes you catch the corner of the script he's reading from. <laughs> Do you think the reason okay, why we... So you saw the sign for Malibu. We're in Malibu Beach, California. Oh, great. California. Thank God. I didn't want to watch a movie outside of California. It's smart. <laughs> By the way, uh, our hero, Rick Martin. Not Ricky Martin. Rick Martin. Rick Martin. He Not to be confused with Ricky Martin. Rick Ricky Martin. Ricky yeah. Martin was very popular, was it? In... Not for years to come, <laughs> right? Well, he, the... The, he had a sitcom in the 60s or 50s. Ozzie and Harriet. Wait, I guess I'm thinking Junior. Okay, here's uh, Grandpa and Mom. Okay. All right. They moved here from San Francisco after Ricky Rick ended up in jail for beating a kid. But luckily he was a juvenile. Okay? <laughs> now the father's very... The grandfather's very judgmental. Wait, what did he get busted? He beat up a kid. Oh, in San Francisco. We find out later in the film, yeah, in San Francisco, because San Francisco does that to people. Yeah, but you just... You they, find out <laughs> later in the film that uh, he was in the right in this beating. That is the girlfriend. Okay. And her name is Janet, and, and her real name is Yvonne, Yvonne Lime, and she goes on to do some things I'll tell you about later. Oh, that's cool. I like that these cars are cool. They are. And how could those kids really, you know, these are teenagers, 30-year-old teenagers. How could they really afford that kind of cool car, right? <laughs> well, yeah, that's like in any of these movies. I mean, you you watch films like that take place in any generation, and the kids like live in these like suburban mansions, or they live in these like, you know, airy... Uh, nice apartments. Yeah, airy apartments. And there's a problem, and it's like, what's the problem? You have a nice place. All kids in high school movies have cars. Yeah. That's horrible Redenbacher. <laughs> he's he said stop the movie. Where's my popcorn? So what's happening right now is he's saying, Why are you letting that kid just go out and do whatever that's a picture of the dad who died and he's given her a guilt trip. If my if my son was alive he wouldn't be. Oh, put on the sounds now. We're going to hear a song. It's a terrible. Song. So we've gone from the drag strip to the beach. Oh, it's Calypso. There's shirtless guys singing Calypso. And... But how those kisses will confuse when the time comes that she must choose. This is my ringtone. Who's singing this? The internet claims that um, uh, Connie Stevens is singing it, but she doesn't. She's not even there. Yeah. She plays a character called Marge, and I only really see her one time at this, like, sock hop where she does a song. Marge, do you know who Connie Stevens is? I, I, I. Connie Stevens, like, where the boys are? Where the boys are. We all know Connie Stevens. Yeah. And she sang, uh, I'm sorry, so right. sorry. Please <laughs> accept my apology. I love that song. Now, That's... the three of us have only ever seen her as an old bag. But right. But in this movie, you will... Oh, no, you... Okay. <laughs> where, the, where the boys are from 1962 about they show on the beach and date rape. <laughs> really? I haven't seen the movie. Typical. We'll watch it immediately afterwards. Daytona Beach was on the cooler coast, the East Coast. Is this East Coast movie? No, the, the Connie, Connie. No, this this movie is uh, is is Malibu, uh, L.A. area. These shirtless so dudes are still singing. About this uh, AIP, this um, uh, what was it, American? American International Pictures. Now, the first thing is stupid is American, then international. Does that make sense? Right? Okay, so there was this guy. He was the co-founder, and his name is Sam Arkoff.
and he used something called the Arkoff formula to determine what kind of projects he would make, right? Right. So it had to be action. It had to be a revolution, like sensational subject matter that's going on, like right now, like rock and roll. It had to have killing in it. It had to have staged acts of violence. It had to have a memorable speech, and it had to have the hint of fornication. <laughs> So this one has Calypso in it. So this must be June of 1957 or something, right? Like that's <laughs> yeah. That's how popular there pop isn't culture too. Really, any true rock and roll in this whole film. It's weird because it says drag strip, and I I just didn't imagine it was a beach movie as well. Oh, here we go. Bombshell at three o'clock. Yeah, watch what the bombshell does. It's pretty good. This guy's like following her. Oh, he's a kid, you know. He's, uh, Marcus just called him the comic boy. Did he try? Wow, she's in the background. Ooh. Did he catch it? Yeah, she slapped the fuck out of him. Well, everybody watches. Uh, also, you should see his pants. He has like a raging boner right now. All right. Sorry about my dogs. They're a little vocal. Right now we see the bad guy in the film and the good guy in the film, and we're establishing that they don't like each other. So the, the bad guy has black hair and the good guy has blonde hair. That's how you could tell them apart. Way it should be. It saves money on hats. Oh, of course. It's his. Mo- we'll say it again. You save money on hats instead of having a villain wearing a black hat. <laughs> you just have him have black hair. Okay. Oh, here comes Fonzie. All right, Fonzie. Is that Fonzie? This movie takes place in eighty in the nineteen fifties. How many uh, Fonzies were there back then? Well, the true thing is there are no. None of these guys really are Fonzie. Nobody's cool. They're just bad. They're, uh... Oh, yeah. Good. Motorc- the beach party is canceled by the motorcycle gang. Ooh, a toot box. Okay, so, yeah, here we are at the sock hop, and we're seeing, like, Arnold before there was an Arnold. Yeah, you mentioned that before, Carl, and it just reminded me, like, this Arnold was a 70s creation of the 50s. This was shot during the 50s. So this is like, even though it is a set, it's closer to the source. Yeah, you know that it's not the source. It's a pretend Hollywood movie, but it's closer. Just like you and I in the 80s used to see that pretend nightclub of the 80s that never existed. Uh, I don't know if these places existed but this well, is what, Happy Days is a copy of uh, American Graffiti. Yeah, that's right. Which is also 70s and nostalgia for the 50s. And the fact that we're ironically making fun of a movie from the 50s is nostalgic of the 80s. <laughs> now he's going to cut in, and she's like, yeah, oh, bite. This looks <laughs> very familiar. She's the owner of the sock hop. But I don't know. Stay right, isn't that Stay right? Is that Faye Ray? Wow. wow. Good for her. Heavy. Yeah, but I mean, she's working and she's living, so that's God bless her. Because uh, King Kong and uh, the world's the man, uh, most dangerous game, where that stupid movie was, this is like 32, 33, and this is 25 the years most later. Dangerous game. That's a great movie, too. I want to do that movie, actually, because every single motion picture movie is based on that film. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just. And they recycle it explicitly, or it's just kind of winds up the third act as they're being chased, hunted down. It's just it's just that movie over and over again. Sorry to yeah, bum you guys out at the sock hop. All right, so five year old teenagers. <laughs> now see the bad guys come in and we're gonna get to see I mean I hate to ruin it for you, but I don't. But no. see a nice cat fight. This looks like the the wild ones, right? They show up. Yeah, see, that's the thing. This American international films would see, like, what was out there and popular. 
That's Rizzo. <laughs> that, that's Rizzo from Greece. <laughs> oh, yeah. Soccer Channing. Is that really Soccer Channing? She's dancing with... She's dancing with... It's not really. She's dancing with Kanicki right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's dead, isn't he? I don't think so. I think he's still on Facebook. She's doing a, a good wild number. I've never seen anyone dance like that. So I'll make an exception uh, this she time. She says right now, like, oh, you're showing off, and it pisses her off. I know we never listen to the, to the audio, but they're about to have the cat fight when she, like, picks a fight like that. <laughs> this guy dances like me. He hasn't moved his feet once. Oh, wait, no, he's going to a different part of the dance floor. Look out. No wonder, did they make any money, these sock hops? I guess people hung around and had milkshakes and danced on the floor. Yeah, you see, but it implies that you're at a bar. That's the implication. And you'll see in, in the scenes that we're in here, they hold the soda thing like it's a beer, but it's not a beer. Are there ash cherries? Here it comes, here it comes. Ready? Ready. Watch how the guys react. They just stand around and watch. They don't break it up. They're like, <laughs> enjoy it. Ooh. Wow, she slapped her so hard that she spun around. And now they're hair pulling. That's right. They're not fighting, they're magicians. They're pulling rabbits out of their uh, hats. They're hair pulling. <laughs> Someone turn off the jukebox. Now they break it up. Yeah. That's enough hair tugging you see for a how day. It looks like a beer. You see how it looks like a beer, but. It's a root beer. Oh. Somebody spilled my sarsaparilla. Now, the, the guy with the black hair did that on purpose to make the guy with the blonde hair look like the guy who did it. So we get him to a fight. He just punched him right in the belt. There's a lot of fighting. I don't know why uh, Fay Ray hasn't called the police or King Kong or somebody yet. <laughs> now... Our hero, Ricky, here, promised his mother, because of San Francisco incident when he was thrown in the claim, no fighting. So he looks like a pussy in front of all his friends right now. Oh, good. We need more pacifists in 50s movies. Pass the fist. <laughs> if this was an 80s now, this movie. Guy, yeah. Now this guy's like, okay, this guy's a... P-U-S-S-Y, he won't do anything, so I'll try to take his girl. But, oh, he's written no P-U-S-S-Y. Back off, woman. Come Ooh, on, fight, fight, fight. This guy would be Andrew Dice Clay in the 80s film. Oh. Very good. Okay, see this guy here? Yeah. He's got real problems. He's got mental problems, and he's going to buy it in the end of it. Uh, in the middle of the film. He's gripping that soda bottle like it's fucking mezcal or something. Yeah. Like it's mezcal. <laughs> oh, oh, right in the... Rock em, fuck em, oh, this is a real good fight. Yeah, come on. Fight, Here's fight. The bad guy again. See him? Yeah, he's wearing like a, <laughs> a white turtleneck and, and outside in the beach. You see what I'm saying, Marcus? Mike picked an excellent, excellent film. That's a very good movie. <laughs> well, you know, I just wanted to pick. I just wanted a fifties film. Like Star Trek fighting. Oh no, this guy's gonna fucking ejaculate all over the way he's choking him. Got to jerk off. Is this fighting, or they're just like improvising the scene right now? Essentially, the the Fonzie guy is gonna have to say "uncle" kind of thing. You see how disappointed the... Oh, yeah, he's going to have to be like Fonzie. He'll be like, I'm so, so, so. I'm so, 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 so. I, pa, uh. Remember when Fon Fonzie can't apologize. Ruh, 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 ruh. <laughs> is Chuck... Is it, true okay? that, is it true that Chuck Cunningham shows up in this movie? Like in the first 10 minutes and then he disappears? Do you remember Chuck? He was the older brother. He was in the first season and a half. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, 
He wrote him out. Fonzie showed up and they said, see you, Chuck. Now, this judgmental dad, right? Yeah. He's working on a shit. Look at his, he's working on like a model. He hasn't left this chair the whole movie. I think they shot all those scenes in like 20 minutes one afternoon. Now, again, this is 1957. So, like, the son doesn't come home and go, screw you, pops. He comes home and goes, gosh, job. You know, he if you just be a little nicer to me. You know what I mean? Like, they're so polite, even when they're not polite. What What about uh, uh, Rebel Without a Cause? Was that in the 50s? Yeah, that's why this movie exists. Because Rebel Without a Cause came out. As Dennis Hopper, Rebel Without a Cause. Well, he hated his dad, Jim Backus, who'd always be yelling at him. You're tearing me apart. He thought that Jim Backus was, uh, you remember he had an apron on? Yeah, right. He's like completely emasculated. I learned that in Montclair High uh, Tech AV film class. We watched that film and then the teacher told us that he was emasculated because he was dressed up like a woman. Yeah, in the West, we just see just a man wearing an apron. I didn't know he was supposed to be emasculated. Well, the apron, yeah, right. <laughs> he was holding a tray of, like, food for his son. Well, yeah, they call that cosplay now. <laughs> oh, this guy. Hunchback. Well, yeah, the mom is having, like, a heart-to-heart, and then he comes in and, like, says, you're too nice to him. He has but old man pants. Fight, you see, and he broke... His promise to the mom. He, do you guys see his old man pants? It's like up to his, it's past his belly button yeah. in the belt. You can see his balls dangle from each pants leg. <laughs> Is he going to tell his son to duck and cover? Because he does look like that fucking turtle from the uh, duck and cover commercial cartoon. This film is a snooze. This was that time. This is like, oh, blah, 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 blah. All right, here's one scene of racing. Let's fill out the rest of this movie. I would rather watch the dad build a boat. You know, you're right about that, Mike. There was one scene of racing. Uh, they, like, really cheeked out with the... Uh, you're right. There's, there, there's one scene of racing, and then there's a private drag race, which is kind of fake. Uh, you'll see. They did get a clip on the door. Right. even closed. It's a nice set. Well, the set must have been uh, built in like that afternoon. I like how with the. You see the uh, what he's talking into now with the primitive communication device. You see, it's actually tethered to the wall, <laughs> and uh, the voice would transmit over copper wire, miles and miles. Carl, I have to do this joke on you because it never works, but I really like it. Why do people get so fucking paranoid when you call up a wrong number? You know, you call up and you'll say, hi, is Carl there? And they'll say, no. How did you get this number? And I'm like, I dialed one and then the number and I hit the green enter button. I hear your voice, but you're not in the room. How is that possible? This isn't the NSA, mister. Yeah. Now, I told you that the woman's real name was Yvonne Lyme. Uh, and um, I found out that Yvonne does not start with the letter E. It starts with the letter Y. This woman kind of scold. It's, this woman kind of scolded me about it, but she didn't correct me. What what letter does it start with? Why? Because I want to know. Why? I just don't want to spell it right, you know. But why? Okay, so right Carl, now, I don't understand. Right, this is, right yeah. now, he's, he got the cars taken away because he broke his promise. His car has been taken away because he broke his promise and he fought again. And it was the grandpa that stepped in and was like, you're not, you know, it wasn't for grandpa, he'd have his car. Well, he can't race a drag race without a car, so he comes to his best buddy. like, can you suit this up for me? Can you? So he it's a loan. And right now, the buddy's giving him a lot of hassle, like, you should be nice to your mom. He's like, you gonna make this car run right or what? So then he said, I'm gonna make it purr. This is like the most 
uninteresting scene. You you telling me what the scene was about was a lot more interesting than watching two actors in a set in front of a prop car and some kind of foggy background talking about it. And the guy with the Kangol. That's a classic Kangol. It's so yeah. old. There's a uh, Joey on as a as a logo. That's how long ago it was. It wasn't a full kangaroo. It was just a Joey. He's also got the uh, glasses, like he's slicker. Wait, Mike, I think I just got your joke. Like, it was so young that the kangaroo was a jelly. Yeah, that's it. That was it. <laughs> Very good. I don't know. <laughs> this, uh, and the park, in Golden Gate Park, they have an annual car picnic, and people bring their vintage cars, and they park it in a lot in uh, Hellman's Hollow. And uh, you you go and you, you, you see other car enthusiasts, and you can see all these, like, vintage cars. And they, it looks like this. A lot of cars are painted with the San Francisco Giants color, uh, black and orange, international orange. Were, was there San Francisco Giants in the 50s? I don't know if they were around during the 50s. No, so. the 60s. 60s, yeah. I was wondering where key, keys are. All right, some exciting sports car racing. Yeah, so what's going to happen here is the bad guy with the black hair... It is uh, going to be in the drag race with the good guy. And they're going to go around some, I don't know, he's going to do something cheating-wise. And it's going to, like, bonk our blonde-haired friend. Okay? They're going to be all cheaty. And, like, he loses the race. So then there'll be a confrontation after, like, you bonked me. I think you just sort because you lost. Well, do you want to do a cheeky run? Like, like Rebel Without a Cause. But it's not. It's uh, They're going to go do a private drag race. And it's very dangerous and... These cars look very dangerous. I mean, there's no seatbelts or anything like that, and they just have two seats and a big uh, metal grill around it. Is that Faye Ray that came in? Oh, but I did see a black guy. All right, that's uh, 23 minutes into the movie. I see that dude drinking in the background. He's like, add seed. I'm going to drink all the free beer they got on set. Look at those guys drinking beer. It's like the producers pay for it. Just keep drinking. What are those two guys doing? The shirtless guy and the other one touching his chest. Oh, he's looking at his cell phone. This, they must be from the future. <laughs> now, as you know, the car was not the original... I've heard of body painting. So but as you know, the car wasn't the original car because they got so they're painting it. Well, I've heard of. What I was saying. I've heard of body painting, but car body painting. Sixty-nine. <laughs> Is that really what that said? I'm sure that they didn't mean that. It was. It's not counterculture time yet. You know, Carl, that people sucked each other's genitals at the same time back in the fifties. It wasn't like a big deal. Prove it? All right, I'll prove it. Remember that Happy Days episode in season four? You know, you know there was an episode where Fonzie jumped the shark. This is the one where Fonzie sucked off a guy while he was getting sucked off episode? Yeah, I remember that episode, but it was shot in the 70s, too. Oh, yeah, you're right. Well, he was cruising. They all said, hey, did you just see that new movie, Cruising? That gives us an idea. Happy Days was on for like ever. They never went into the 60s, no, right? So this is pretty cool. They're, they're showing an actual car race. Is this a drag strip? Yeah, and you can see that it's by the airport because it's a real drag strip in Malibu and it's a real race day. And they, they just took advantage of that. And it wasn't stock footage. They went and shot there. They got permission. That's pretty cool. Uh, I like that. They were all, yeah. But they were supposed to promote the place as part of the deal, and yeah. they like didn't. You don't see a sign of the place. I don't know why, but yeah, it's not like it wouldn't dis disrupt the the point of this movie. It wouldn't pull me out of the moment. Oh yeah. By the way, guys, this is not a drag race. You have 50 cars, it's not a drag race. <laughs> They're doing 25 drag and races. it doesn't go straight. It goes in this, like an oval. 
Oh, so this is a yeah, track. There's many race. clues to this not being a giant race. The pit stops, for example. I was wondering if they going to jump over 16 school buses. Or was that just Fonzie? Yeah, that was Fonzie. And again, it's a sensationalized version of this True Life 50. <laughs> Which we're watching right now True Life 50s drag racing. Track racing. Yeah, this is more like a Le Mans style track, I think. They left the stadium. I mean, they left the, the people. They're, they're off in California land driving on the, our beautiful roads, our freeways. It's a good point. There's no spectators. Yeah, this doesn't seem to have any kind of like the logic to the, to the racing. It's just like, just drive around until you, you know, find your way home again, and then we'll pick a winner. Are these the same make of cars, it's a, or do they have other advertisers? Now we're back with the crowd, and the incident's going to happen soon. This is like the year after they stopped using riding mechanics. It's a good thing the accident happens in front of the crowd instead of like during the rest of the course. We're shooting cars and we're selling the footage to you to watch. This is a really good. Uh, they keep on losing the crowd. Maybe the track does extend somewhere. Yeah, I like how they call this. Oh, look at that! They they drove past the camera. It, they call this a rockabilly film, but I've yet to hear a fucking song play during during this race. It, it, it's. I listened to the whole thing with the sound. These are not rock and roll songs. You heard the Calypso thing. You'll hear Connie's song. Where the I think somebody are. saw the movie poster and, you know, looked at the title and thought to themselves, it probably is that. There it is. There's oh. the incident. Why, you dirty skunk? He wiped out. He saw a patch of bird seed with a sign and he stopped to eat it. wiped out so this is like the the real this isn't CGI like Fast and the Furious that car purposely drove into a ditch and then backed up and drove by the camera again. It, it, it could be CGI they're very good nowadays yeah I guess they started with this film the movie The Fast and the Furious was a Roger Corman movie from the 1950s which they bought the rights to when the first film came out uh -huh. Have you guys used exclusive cleaners? They're pretty good. They were advertising behind the uh, racetrack. So now we have the fight, which goes, you wiped me out, and I didn't. You're just a sore loser. And he gets challenged to a uh, race. And the girlfriend's like, please, Rick, don't, Rick. Please, Rick, don't, Rick. Woman, don't bother me. Oh, man. He's really going to tell her off in front of all the guys? Yeah. And it's like anywhere, anytime, Rick. These are all high school kids, right? Do they go to the know. local college? Are, Mark, are they? Yeah. We don't, I guess we don't, I'm not sure if it's high school or college. And they're always in high school. Yeah. Maybe they're the, they're like the teachers. Yeah, the college kids have different problems. They have Bobby Soxer problems. Do you think that's product placement, Marcus, or do you think it's too early? Well, I think Shell Oil was more popular than Mobile Oil. Back in the 1950s? Ever since Cat came out. Yeah, I, I don't know, like, this set would have, like, uh, Budweiser commercials in the background if it was from the 80s. A couple of Michelob neon signs. It doesn't have the mobile with the, uh, the Pegasus flying, so I'm not sure if that's legitimate. Might be a knockoff. Yeah, it might have been the truck that was there at the race anyway. And they, they just shot in front of it. 
Now, you see, he's got the pretend beer in his hand, and it's got no label because <laughs> they're not endorsing a brand. So Rick's she's... showing up and is like, tell me the details of our drag race. You know, it's in three hours. And the good, the bad guy is setting the terms here. That's what's happened. And the girlfriend is still like, no, please don't. I already told you, woman. <laughs> this is really strange, then. Yeah, this is a parlay. Oh, come well, on. I'm on the line, before. too. It's still 50s. It's still all polite, you know? Yeah, they, well, they're all like, oh, gee whiz, like in unison. But I, I, might, I might just be the movie, Carl. Sure. I mean, who knows what pe- oh, how people... yeah, no, it's the movie. It's not real life. But, I mean, like, when he just... Gee, you're not my favorite guy either. You know that, Rick? <laughs> you know, you're right. It's the movie, but... Well, there's no, like, recorded proof of how people talked in the 50s, so I'm just going to have to go with Direct Ship Riot's version. Yeah. When day did you go get, um, his name, Roger Altman, Altman's first movie? It looks just like this. Exactly like this. Which one of his films? Altman's first movie. It's, like, shot in, like, 1957, and it's, you know, it's just exactly the same as this, and they listen to jazz instead of <laughs> rock and roll. They all get into fights, and, you know... They're bad kids. Uh, I'll have to, I have to check that one out. I know he did uh, come back to the Five and Dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean. I don't know. If yeah, that, this yeah. one was like shot in Kansas City. Oh, in very the cool. Late fifties. Oh, right, because he's black and white. <laughs> big fan, right? I can hear in the background. He's uh, he's from Kansas City, I think, and he made that movie Kansas City, which I never saw. Okay, good. We're going to the drive-in. Thank God we'll see another movie. <laughs> no, it's the drag race. <laughs> they got to wait. It's something like when the train passes, that's the cue for them to all go. Now, look, you see everybody's there in the sock hop. They're not watching. It, that's on purpose so that the cops won't notice that there's a sting going on. Oh, I see. Here comes the train, and that's like our starting line flag. Oh, because the noise of the... Uh, mountains in the distance? This must be like, where's this, Colorado? Arizona? This is California, you're right, it's California. In Malibu, it feels like that? I guess it does. Well, there used to be, there are houses out of these hills. But I don't really see them right now. It's a little more populated now. Oh, they're playing chicken? Train chicken. You know what? Yes, it's chicken. It's not, uh, and clearly you saw who was chicken. I'm sorry I misled you and said that it was a race. It wasn't. It, it wasn't that the train was yeah. coming to. Well, I'm playing the yeah, producers. Yeah, that was not a drag race either. Yeah, that wasn't a drag race either. I played the producers, and they, they cheated. They just showed stock footage of a train and the two people driving off. Dad's root beer is still around. That sign they have back there, that's a classic one. It's either for root beer or condoms, I'm not sure. Well, there there is still such a thing today as Dad's root beer. All right, well, Connie Francis... I mean, and, every time I buy root beer, it's, you know... Oh, right, it's, it's Dad's root beer. Oh, here's the, the point. They had to get to the point, Carl. He just drove to Finally the bar... Excuse me, gentlemen. What's the point? It's behind you. Okay, so what's happening here now is that um, our bad guy, who's like part of the Happy Days crew, is making a deal with the devil. He's going, you know, for Rick. They are mad at, they don't like Rick because of the fight and everything. So he's making a deal like, I'll set Rick up. You know, I hate Rick too. So deal with the devil. Ooh, that's a nice switch plate. That's what the kids had right back then. That's a comb. <laughs> oh, this is that psycho a you're talking about. A bald teenager. By the way, these right, guys, right. 
these have these guys have the worst bazooka joke comics. They cannot tell a joke, you know. They're like, well, I give up. Why is a cucumber like a flute? And the other guy's like, I'm going to stab you with my knife. Wasn't funny. Okay, so the big guy comes out and he goes, you two lay off of him. I want to hear what he has to say. And he goes, look, I want to set up Rick. You guys got to help. And he goes, all right, but you're in this with us. And that's what's going on. I guess that's the dad. This is a pretty exciting movie. It's a, it's an hour and, a, and ten now, minutes. So, in, in that guy's formula, it includes like death and violence, and that's coming. Now you see the guy who's to the right, the most rightmost guy. You know, the guy who's called a teenager. He's gonna buy it. Oh, here we are. We're back okay, at the soccer. Oh, nice. Let's hear some audio. Oh, all right. Hang on. Let me plug it in. So they're full on singing a song yeah, to a like backing track in a sock at a ice cream parlor. Such a weird set. There's like two places where they could put the camera, like away from the boots, and then right here. They had not invented the three camera shoot yet. Yeah, you're right. This is all kind of. It's a quick shot. Hey, San Francisco! Was Lucille Ball, but it wasn't Lucille, it was the other. Uh, it was Lucille Ball. All right. Wow, young Connie Francis. Stevens. Young Connie yeah, Stevens. Yeah, now, the thing is, it's nonsensical. Like, why in a sock hop is she in the middle, right? She's got her people with her. And when they're not. Uh, soccer chant, soccer chanting. <laughs> Faye Ray Faye became Ray. like a cult figure, right? There's like a Faye Ray song from uh, Rocky Horror. There's a Faye Ray band like called Faye Ray, but spelled differently. Look at his po poise. Did you see it? <laughs> that was like a 80s band, 80s new wave band. Yeah, right. Faye Ray. Whoa, that works on two Did levels. you ever have to like, you have to go to the bathroom, but you're in a, a, a public situation, so you kind of strike a pose? That's what he was doing. <laughs> And roll him. He's doing the PP. I mean, dance. for a second, he looked like Death to Pesh Mode. Yeah, this is their first album. Let it be. <laughs> now they're spying on Rick. Once Rick drops off the girl, then he's going to be driving home, and that's when they'll break away and uh, rendezvous. Oh, this is the Road Warrior. What's up with her seat? She's sitting in the passengers in the driver's seat with him. It was like made for she two people. She snuggled up to him. Oh, And right. they're looking over Los Angeles and saying, there's a million lights like our love. <laughs> oh, this must be make out point. Yep, there we go, make out. Yeah, you were you saw the point, right? Yeah. And now this is make out point. Yeah, the bar was called The Point. And he drove there quickly. He had to get to The Point. For our listeners who just came, tuned in. I'll repeat the best joke today. No, uh, I think uh, the Joey on the Kangol. <laughs> That's it's an old Kango. The uh, kangaroo is a Joey. It was their first Kangol. The uh, I'm gonna stop. So I like how those guys don't have no problem hanging over a cliff for that shot. This is like behind the Hollywood sign, Hollywood Land sign, I guess. <laughs> this is where they shot MASH in the 70s that's right yeah the helicopters came down here every week so now he's free to get ambushed usually MASH reruns would play after Happy Days reruns yeah this is exactly the same plot as Mad Max <laughs> you up on a hill waiting watching oh yeah Look at this. They, the camera timed it perfectly. The camera is like high up on a perch and is shooting these aerial shot of uh, bikers approaching the car. Oh. Bikers on your back. 
It the lighting's a, not so great here, right? The cinematography? Yeah, it's, it's Why pretty are you dim- holding a single from the center? <laughs> His hair's good. Yeah, I like how they shoot it like a mile away from the, the road. Just this shot. Looks like the Mach 5 sometimes, that car. Yeah, that car? Or the Razor? <laughs> I mean, you know, Speed Racer, Mach oh, 5. Yeah. You, did you see that slick move? But you can't get away from us. Oh, yeah, they're still chasing him. You got the main force patrol interceptor. What terrible lighting. <laughs> That's pretty cool. They shot this. They must have Here had... comes the incident now. You see, he's going to hit him on the head with a... Crowbar? With a wrench. That's pretty... But there's going to be a mistake. There's a fly. Let me get it for you. You see what happened? He slowed down and the motorcyclist went too far. And then they and the threw... the guy threw the wrench and it hit his friend who's now tumbled over the side of the cliff. But the plus side, they got $10,000 when they submitted it to America's Funniest Home Video. <laughs> when they won. I better call the police. Drives 50 miles. Can I use your phone? Oh, no. Back then, the number for 911 was whatever was the local cop. You had to look it up. Yeah, right. You have to talk to Mabel. Mabel, I says. Yeah, right. You didn't have to look it up. You had to go operator. Yep. Call him Bloomkiss 974. <laughs> Colorado. That's for cops, CO. He's like, I'm going to, he's blaming Ricky right now. Rick. Ricky Nelson is someone else. Right, Rick, Rick. So I guess this is the end of the second act. Okay, now Rick, not Ricky, he knows what happened, and he knows that he's gonna he's gonna get blamed. So he's going to his best friend's house, the one who souped up the car for him. Yeah, and it's two in the morning, so his his friend's gonna be like, "Are you crazy, man?" It looks like he's on the fence. Hour, you know. Sorry, girl, I, I had to say that pun before he left the fence. Say it again, I missed it. He, it looked like he was on the fence when he was approaching the porch, uh, the backyard. <laughs> oh, Mike. Is there no hope for you? <laughs> you can hear jokes like that every Sunday. <laughs> Tune in. Tune in. iTunes, L-W-A-F-L-M-O-Y-T. Type that in, you'll find it. Post every Sunday night. If you were on the fence, consider that last joke. <laughs> Or go to Let's Watch a Full Length Movie on YouTube.blogspot.com. Is this his meth dealer? It's 1957? It's Benny's. Okay, so now he's going to tell him, like, the, what happened from the start, you know? Oh, I already seen, I already then seen this he's part. Say, you know, can you loan me some money? I'm going to disappear. And he's like, well, where are you going to go? He's like, I don't know, right? So then he goes home to pack his stuff, and he's with the mom and the grandpa, and he does the right thing and doesn't run away and calls the cops. He was there like a flash, like a woo warp special effect, and the kid he's wrapping up the story. They did some special effect, like he started to talk. Oh, you mean like a throw, uh, a flashback kind of? It was like a flash forward because he was wrapping up his story. 
he had begun. He said, let me tell you my story. It opens up with the American International Pictures logo. Then some... <laughs> You're right, Mike, actually. He does. He goes, first I was dropping off uh, Janet, and then it does. It cuts to the end. He goes, I wish I could help you. Can you loan me some money? <laughs> Oh, I should go ahead and put on this mute sound. So this kid starts out a surfer, and now he's a greaser. Those are pretty different cultures back in the 50s. There was only two things you could be back then. Or one of the old people. Oh, my God, this movie. Their shadows on the table are more interesting than the dialogue. Well, how do you know? You mute it. Well, I can't hear the dialogue because there's a cop car outside, but... I did listen to this. I did watch this whole movie and listen to it, and you're 100% right, Mike. Right now, they're like, golly gee, Willikers, I'm in trouble. <laughs> you're a swell friend. That's great. When is our beer coming? Meanwhile, on the road. Hairy arms. That's not a teenager. Terrible shot. The yeah, camera's right. on the passenger seat. <laughs> Propped up with some 1950s phone books. Now, um, you just reminded me that Janet, who is Yvonne Lime, she was in uh, I Was a Teenage Werewolf with Michael Landon. She goes on to that fame. <laughs> Oh, cool. Well, I do know, like, uh, a quick look. This film was directed by the man who's more known for his last film, which was apparently was a TV movie, They Saved Hitler's Brain. It's the same director. Right. I read that on the Internet. Yeah. I, I, I forgot to copy that. That's pretty funny. Now, this guy goes on to do The Virginian, you know, that television show, The Western Sure. <laughs> it's pronounced the, uh, anyway, I don't think you're pronouncing it right. The Vaginian? Yeah, I think in your... That's right. The Vaginian. So what he's doing right now is he's calling the cops to report an accident. He's doing the right thing because he's in front of his parental figures. And then he's going to be arrested for vehicular manslaughter and released on bail. Oh, Really? You know, bail was like 25 so cents back then. he really did the right thing. What, what's, um, I hit pause by mistake. What number are you on, Carl? Okay. Uh, right now, I'm at uh, 49 and a 30. Okay, good. Yeah, we're at the same 30. time. I can pause it. No, no, no. I'm perfect. We're at the same okay. time. Yep. Okay, so I'm coming up on 49.40 now. Okay, cool. This is the lawyer, and he's like, I advise you stay in the house and don't even breathe. And Ricky's going to break that rule. They spent a, I have to say they spent a lot of money for going from one scene to a prop newspaper uh, shot outside to another set. Like, they just had two Peter sets. Peter Lois Lane hat. Oh, this is total, like, <laughs> one. That was on the TV at the time. This is probably a very popular style. He's got the Rick Astley suit. <laughs> And the hair. It's Rick rolling us. You could put a beer on her cozy. All right, she's out What's of here. What's happening right now is he went to court and he pleaded his case that it wasn't my fault. And they're, like, not believing him. All right, I take it back. That suit he's wearing is what's called a teddy boy suit. So teddy. he's getting, like, every single culture possible. Teddy Boy Suits was in the 60s, too, so he was ahead of his time. He's wearing a Teddy Boy Suit, really, with that thin tie and the thin lapels? Yeah. That was his, I'm appearing in front of a judge suit. Right now, the bad guy, our black-haired, but it's not a hat, our black-haired guy is, like, reading the newspaper to everyone going, See, I told you Rick was a skunk. <laughs> He's like Reggie from the, uh, Archie. I don't like this guy. <laughs> That's Reggie. That's Reggie, <laughs> yeah. He's 
There's no Veronicas. Everyone's a Betty. Parker Channing's Veronica. Uh, yeah, right. That's the only Veronica. So where's Connie? The thing is, Stalker's on the on the greasers. Ah. Is he calling from jail? He's calling from his house. No, he's home, and he's calling. He called the stock cop. I know. It's so weird. I just noticed something about her face. That woman is part black. Right there. She is passing for white in this movie. Uh, I have no idea who the actress is. Uh, that's, you see it right there, and that's called passing. You can see that in the 50s. You can huh. see kind of the shape of her face, but that's an African-American with very light skin and light hair. Oh, that's cool, I guess. I didn't realize that. You got to work. That's how you get work. Today she'd be a singing star. I do like the the hair. It's all curl, like tight curls up front and then a weird bun in the back. Oh, yeah, you got a lot of work on that hair. All right, so we uh, just upped a the uh, search for, um, account. Yeah. The Vaughn line ethnicity gives no results. Yeah. See the Jennifer, did, Jennifer uh, Beals wasn't black until like maybe 10 years ago. Jennifer Beals did flash dance, and nobody knew. Oh, that's funny. Right, and her character never really... Yeah, you can still... Saying that, uh, you know, black people still pass for white people on TV and the movies when they need to. I'm, I'm trying to think of a, a recent example, but I know what you're talking about. Like... Jennifer, Jennifer Beals in Flashdance is the big one recently. Who was the woman who was part of a Democratic? Uh, she was trying to be black. Remember, she was white. <laughs> oh, Rachel. Yeah, right now everybody's trying to be Native American. That's what it is. Oh, the Native American. Well, it was, there was a recent example too. Oh, you know what I read? It was a New York sushi chef, who's this white guy who would put on a fake Japanese accent to the point where he say delicious. Oh my God! Do you remember the uh, the Indian that used to cry when you threw garbage in the street? In the, in the 80s, in the 70s. In the oh, the, the, the Indian who would cry? Yeah, he's Italian. <laughs> I feel so very betrayed. Welcome so, to Hollywood. Indians don't cry over garbage, Italians do? Well, he's Sicilian, so he has a nice dark skin, so why not? Mike, speaking of Sicilians, have you pitched our Godfather idea? Well, yeah, you know, we, uh, I have July 15th open. We could just go ahead and do it. Uh, we we want to riff on Godfather, which is a film that we'd probably have to pay for, so it kind of defeats the point of this uh, show. So we might do it as a standalone episode. Saturday, July 15th. Okay. okay. Possible. It's an 8 o'clock show, Pacific Standard Time, Carl. Let me write. Pacific Standard Time? I'm not doing it. <laughs> it's going to be a late night. So th- is this the father really the young actor in makeup? What? Okay, what's happening now is the... She looks like she's orgasming on top of him. So what's happening now is the, is, is the old man's turning. He's like, I've been too tough on him. Now he's run out of the house and we don't know where he is. I'm going to look for Rick. And she's like, I'm coming with you. And so it's like wrapping up the movie. He's going to now like Rick. Okay, so she agreed to meet Rick so that he can explain his side of the story. Now the bad guy shows up. He really shows up. He's like runs towards in the beach. Oh, weird seeing you here in the middle of the beach. That's actually part of it. She's like, how did you know I'd be here? And he's like, oh, I, 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 I just... Uh, now it's going to get a little violent. Unhand me, you brute. <laughs> oh, we got 10 more minutes of this movie. Something's going to have to happen. Did you see that move? <laughs> she went under the arm. <laughs> 
Nice. All right, that's caveman. It is. It's. 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 Mm -hmm. Let's take her to the bushes. I think he's gonna do it at the, in the back cave. What's going on? Now she's like, remember I said no more fighting? Go ahead, fight. Don't let him get away. Now, Push to the ground and grab the other guy. So he agrees to not chase him and just go explain his story. And they go lay on the beach. And maybe you should do some audio because the lovey, lovey talk is so stupid. Now, the first thing he does is go, here, sit on this uncomfortable rock. <laughs> Stick this up your butt for a few minutes. Oh, yeah, come on, sit down. <laughs> this is nice to, like, sit by the ocean and not hear the waves. He's telling his side of the story. Okay, so here we have, like, no, he's not at the sock hop. Let's keep searching, Dad. Oh, what? Wow. He hat. Yeah. He finally left the other movie set. He's just like, well, the sunlight hurts my face. I wonder if he's still in his bow tie. Maybe in the sequel. I mean, why do you wear a hat at night? It's not to keep the sun out of your eyes. <laughs> I like that we watch them drive off. And it's not for being off. chilly. They have the um, convertible down. Yeah, that's true. And let's not forget, they're right at the beach right now, and they're not wearing jackets, which is kind of bullshit if you're from California. Okay, turn on the sound for some great lovey-dovey talk. Okay, yes. Well, it's kind of muffled right now. Oh, here comes the ocean waves. Where they're making out. When the was from here to eternity? Was that before this movie? Before this movie. From here to eternity? Yeah, it was before. With, uh, it was, Robert Mitchum? Yeah, it was before With the. Robert Lancaster. Robert Mitchum, one of them. Uh, I think it was Roger Mitchum. Uh, Robert Mitchum. That yeah. Same scene. Okay, so the bad guys show up and they're going to really rough them up We're now and Stucker Chan is with them. And uh, you should really listen to the lovey dovey talk when we cut to our hero. All right. Oh, a tough sit on it, Ralph. <laughs> yeah, nobody said sit on it. Is that a gun? It's like a crossbow. It's one of those shoot a spear guns. It's a oh, harpoon. It's a spear gun. He's going. He brings a spear fishing gun. All right. Yeah. He's spear fishing Rick. Let's listen, Mike, because it's really bad. Do you know why he brought the spear gun for the halibut? Oh, nothing. I just like to say your name. Very nice. Uh -huh. Rick. Ricky. What's that? It was really what? bad. It's okay. You can do that. Oh, I missed it. Rick, Rick, I love your eyes, kiss. I love your ears, kiss. So bad. They had like 10 minutes to come up with something. Oh my god, they're coming out of the ocean like frogmen. Are there taunts in them? I'm coming after you. Here Beach come. invasion. Beach punks. Now they got bad guy with them. They're like, you're not getting out of this. You're in this with us. So they bring, uh, what'd you call them? The Archie? Reggie. You. you want me, you run for it. No, Maybe they no, really no, are no, Depeche Mode. No, they, they came no, to shoot no, their first no. video. Oh. Now Rick's good. The can't take on eight. Rick's doing a good fight right now. Oh, no. I didn't take that back. They're gonna 
have a Ricka queue. Now the um, that bad guy is going to rationalize, like, yeah, I might have hit my friend with the wrench, but it was because you put on the brakes. That it's your fault that, that the guy's dead, not me. Huh. I'm not saying it to the bad guy. He's going to say it to uh, Rick, and he's going to try to get the bad guy to... He goes, you're so tough, you hold him. So he's the bad guy is going to hold Rick instead of... See, he's got his spear gun. Yeah. He didn't just bring that along for the halibut, man. <laughs> he's going to... Yeah, it's for the birds. All right, let's see. He's going to be threatening. Forget. Right now, he's like... You killed him. You did it. That log wrench was meant for you, not Gordy. Oh, boy. You That's killed really... him, didn't you? Perfect. Didn't you? You're responsible for Gordy's death, not me. You're responsible. That's the third slap in this movie. People love to slap in this fucking film. It's not a bitch slap. They had yet to invent bitch. Right. It's the 50s. Everyone was there, bitch. Just a regular slap. Uh, by the way, you missed it. He was... Oh, there they go. <laughs> oh! He got speared. Spear me your Now, head. our heroes, just like by their spider sense, yeah. hear their friends at the girl scream. This happened like half a block from the sock hop. The sock hop is on the beach where the guy spears him. It's weird. Now we have the rumble. I guess this is the riot. But it's on the beach, it's not on the drag strip. Now it's really a free for all now, and you'll see our hero Janet. She doesn't know what to do with herself, and she stays in the center, not hurting anybody. <laughs> all her friends, including the girls, are kicking some ass. Yeah, they're really fighting right now. They just found see, out the There she is in the middle. Oh, she held oh. somebody's arm. She stopped the punch. She just got thrown to the ground. The cast found out that they're not being paid. Okay, now Grandpa and Mom found him now. This is ridiculous that the parents have been like tagging along, driving, trying to find them. They're and there for the, the older Grandpa people. And Grandpa turns and he's like, "You hit him below the belt, Rick. Get him, poke his eyes." Thanks, Dad. Come on, buddy. Come on, Rick. <laughs> this is bloodthirsty. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Joy. Dad. And you're acting. And roll him. Come <laughs> on, Rick. I got out of the movie set to go outside for this. Oh, here comes a third car that happens to be driving by this freeway. It's the uh, it's Johnny Law. Oh, the Law. It's Officer Crumpke. <laughs> Car 54? Uh, oh, no, from uh, West Side Story. That's right. Sorry. West Side Story. Officer Crumpke. You got it. From view. view. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Arnold, the original Arnold, was the guy with the big nose, uh -huh. and he was in Odd Couple as right. the cop. Murray, yes, the, he Murray the cop. He was a poker buddy. No, uh, I thought the okay. original was uh, it was Pat Marina, right? And then uh, uh, Al took it over. Yeah, Pat Al, Marita. It was Arnold's and then Al's Arnold's, or something like that. By the way, the the spear that was like fatal when before is now like, ouch! This really hurts. Ouch! <laughs> he lasted that long. Yeah, I never liked that about movies where if you shoot a bad guy, they fall down on the ground. But if the hero gets speared in the uh, chest or gets shot, they bleed and in they the make elbow. it through it. Stay with me, buddy. Oh, what's Reggie saying? 
<laughs> All right, you come on, let's go. Reggie is. It's an Irish cop. Is, is telling him that he hit him with the wrench. You know, Ricky, wasn't you're wrench. a tip off the old block. Thank you, Grant. Was that an Irish cop? Can I ask you? This guy. Uh, that was the grandpa thing. I like using the chip off the old block and keep oh, yeah. moving up and down. All right. They don't have to go to the police station to file a report. They could just walk down the beach and disappear. Yeah. The he end. was acquitted of the murder by verbal. Yeah. And you're a chip off the old block. It's all settled. Well, this is a classic violence solves everything movie. <laughs> Uh, here's our cast. Yvonne Lyon. I have her biography from IMDb set up. Uh, Yvonne Lyon was the daughter of a music teacher who encouraged her to study acting. After attending the Pasadena Playhouse and acting in the production of Ah Wilderness, Lyon attracted the notice of an agent who landed her recurring role in TV's Father's No Best, 1954. The blonde actress... She's Tony Batola. What's that? Batola. Never mind. With the blonde actress appeared in many television shows and movies of the eras, including Elvis Presley's Loving You, I Was a Teenage right. Werewolf, and she and later I married was a, a producer. Werewolf with Michael Landon is it. I'm calling her right. I, I'm calling her out right now, Michael. I'm calling her out as one of the other African American casting as white. Okay, well, it's good to know. Uh, yeah, uh, it's cool. She's. Uh, Trying to look and good girls gotta eat. Oh, I I used to uh, let's put it this way. I used to I used to know a lot of those people. The whole the, society out there might be you wouldn't believe. Pass themselves off as white. Them, most the of them are from D.C., but and down south. Wow. And I'm okay. You know, Marcus, it's great to have you on the show. I wanted to, I brought it up earlier, but uh, if uh, if you've been listening to the show to the end, obviously you like movies. Uh, Marcus is in Michael Moore's Capitalism, A Love Story, which is pretty exciting. It's a cool role. Are you, are you, uh, years later, how do you feel about that? Oh, well, you know, a little bit, kind of made me look foolish on camera, but I understand that's his job. He asked me the same question a hundred times. I gave him a hundred different answers and he picked the one that made me look silly. But, you know, that's, that's life in the media. It's probably why I'm never going back to it. Interesting. I didn't. I didn't realize that. I thought you came off okay. Actually, you. You seem like. Well, the, thank you. You were the human aspect. Was, uh, you, you actually agreed to do it, and you sat on a park bench and talked to him. So I, I thought that was. Well, uh, I, I thought it would actually. He wanted. To, I thought he wanted to hear truth, but he didn't really care. I tried to tell him all kinds of dirty stuff about Wall Street, and he didn't use any of it. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's weird. Mike, I don't, tell Marcus how you tell the story about how you saw Marcus. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. So I had seen Fahrenheit 451 or 9-11, wherever the film was, and it was all right. And then I knew, like, he did a film which was basically a book tour guide. He, he had a book and he had a tour, and it was a documentary on this tour, which was kind of a pointless movie, the big one. And uh, so Capitalist Love Story comes around, and I go, okay, I'll watch it. And it's fucking Marcus shows up, and I was like, holy shit! You know, like I was, I was shocked because I had no idea you would be in that movie. What and, the heck is what is it? Twilight Zone? Uh, yeah, I mean, we had done fish burgers together, and I was like, oh my god! But I, uh, it was pretty cool. I, I, I get it. Like he, he had this agenda. You probably did come off as foolish, but I thought you did come off as like one of the few human beings in that movie because you were more of a yeah, humane I face. Agree. Like you were, you oh, were thank the, you very much, Michael. I really appreciate you saying that. Yeah, because you, you came off as a face of it. You know, like, obviously, you, you worked in Wall Street, and he was asking these questions, but none of these guys actually talked to him. So, yeah, all right, cool. So go go ahead, guys, watch, uh, find uh, BitTorrent at the movie Illegally and check out Capitalism, a love story, and uh, check out Marcus in it, Marcus Help, uh, and just make sure Michael Moore doesn't get any money. You know, uh, full disclosure, my brother worked for Michael Moore. My brother Adam, who does the uh -huh. Proudly Resents podcast, uh, he was on his TV Nation show, and uh, he was dressed up as Chuckles, the corporate chicken, uh, as a PA. Oh, he was corporate chicken because I thought it was uh, you know Adam Bills and uh, the eyes. The eyes gave it away. There's a lot of scenes where there's like the chickens out in the field, and a lot of those were Adam. Like when Adam he, was always outstanding in his field. Right, he was literally outstanding in the field in this case. All right, well, that's a good joke to end on, huh? Tweet. 
Uh, Marcus, uh, is there any uh, uh, any way people uh, do anything you want to plug? Any way people want to reach you? Any public thing you uh, like to disclose? Okay, so I want to say hi to all my homies out there yeah. in uh, listening land, and uh, take it easy, stay cool. And I'll see you next time. All right, yeah, and you know, by next well, time, I, I would no, love. I won't. I won't see you later. <laughs> I would. Lo- I would love to get you back on the show. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Mike. I've had a lot of fun. Well, cool. Yeah, great to have you, Marcus. Carl, uh, any shows coming up? Yeah, I've got um, a show at the Union Performing Arts Center. I mean, at the uh, Union County Performing Arts Center in Rawway. That's on July 16th. And I know people are going to show up because of this podcast. Thank you, Mike. (laughs) And I'll be at Tierney's Tavern in Montclair making a fool of myself. That's also uh, Sunday, July 23, I think it is. I don't know. Oh, that's coming up. Look it up at my website. Uh, Carl dot sucks, and that sucks with an S at the end. Uh, yeah, as many things that suck are, I suck. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. Carl dot sucks has all all the dates, and check them out on the uh, July twenty second. Uh, I'll be on here at Muni Radio next Friday. This Friday coming up uh, for the eight o'clock show, so you can listen live or pick up the podcast of uh, Pam's Comedy Clubhouse. Is the show, and there's it's other fantastic great- folks. Fantastic. You're absolutely right. I knew there was some kind of weird thing to it. And you can just check me out at, at Spiegelmania on YouTube and Instagram. I want to thank you guys so much, the Brothers Help, for uh, making this movie experience exciting. Uh, and uh, <laughs> that was a terrible movie. But it was fun, I guess. It really was. And it was fun. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. We have a next, uh, great movie next week. So uh, tell your friends. Follow us on iTunes. Follow us on radio.fm. And uh, take care. Thank you guys so much. Here's Carl's theme song. Bye. Bye, Mike. Bye, Carl. Bye, Mike. Let's watch a full-length movie on YouTube with more. This is Carl, uh, 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 Mike's friend. I uh, wrote this song. Uh, my turn-ons are satin sheets and the way champagne tickles my nose. And, uh, I love to pee outdoors. Listen, you should follow me on Twitter. It's jokes to Carl, the French duh, not the oh, oh, duh. Let's